Bags down, spikes on, welcome to the track. Hi, my name is Colin Waitsman. I'm going to be your host of this episode of Track World News presented by Track Barn. And before we get into everything, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. It really helps us know that you're enjoying the content over here. And man, oh man, do we have a lot of things to cover today. Uh, two U20 world records go down. Trayvon Bermel opening up with a 975. Uh, we have Christine Mboma opening up with a world World lead and we'll talk a little bit about the pen relays and Drake relays as well so a lot of things that we're, we're gonna be covering so let's just jump right into it with uh, Arian Knighton so Arian Knighton uh, is having an amazing start of his career so far so uh, this past weekend he runs a 19.49 at LSU which is the new U20 world record which he broke his own record that he set last year with a time of 19.84. This is the first ever 19.4 ever ran in the 200, and this puts him fourth overall uh, for fastest time ever. Uh, the order goes Usain Bolt, who ran the 19.19. Then we have Johan Blake, who ran the 19.26. And then we have Michael Johnson with the 19.32. And then we have Arian Knighton with the 19.49, and he leapfrogged right over Noah Lyles, who has the 19.5, uh, so he moves him down to fifth place. So uh, this is an insane race. I mean, if you look back at the tape, not only was Arian Knighton's time very fast, it was just a fast time overall. Joseph Fonbele, he runs a 19.92, and then Dorian Campbell runs a 20.0. Uh, both very fast times for Dorian. It was a massive PR for him, guy from LSU. He's actually been improving every single race, so he's someone that you should really watch out for um, going into the, the national championship here. But uh, Aaron Knighton has been on an absolute tear. Uh, so obviously, last year he runs the 19.84, he now has four sub 20 uh, times. And so a lot of people, obviously, and, and I believe rightfully so, are, are making the comparison to Usain Bolt and saying, all right, so where does this put Arian Knighton? Because obviously, whenever somebody runs a fast time, the first thing that we automatically assume and you automatically will see is this guy is going to be the next Usain Bolt. We saw this with Arian Knighton, obviously. We've seen this with Terrence Laird, Matthew Bowling, uh, Coleman. You saw this with Noah Lyles. Uh, everyone. Like, if you're a young, fast guy, you have been compared to Usain Bolt at one point in your career. It's That's just how our sport kind of works. And pretty much all of them so far have not really led up to actually being Usain Bolt because Usain Bolt ran very fast at a very young age. He broke the world records when he was 22 years old, just about to turn 23 the next day. So he has been very fast, very young. And so many of these guys are running fast times. I mean, probably Noah Lyles is the closest person to it with where he ran the fifth, fifth fastest time with a 19.5, but uh, right now, like Aaron Knighton's got the best case to actually not only be Usain Bolt, but I mean, he might be better. I mean, like, let's take a look and compare these two um, right now. At the age of 18, he didn't run the 100 yet. So he started the 100 when he was 19 years old, because the first one is, no, maybe 20, uh, because the first one was in uh, 2007. He ran a 10.03, was his first 100, and then the next year he ran a 9.68, and then in the 200, he ran a 19.93. So Arian Knighton broke his U20 world record uh, last year with his 19.84. So he ran a 19.93. And then in the 400, he ran a 45.35. And then as an accolade, he came in 40th in the Olympics. He got knocked out of the, uh, out of the prelims uh, there. And so where does that stack up with Arian Knighton? Well, uh, Arian Knighton, he has a 100 of a 10.04, so very fast. Obviously, we haven't seen anything at Usain Bolt at this time, but 10.04. Uh, he has a 19.49 in the 200, obviously, and a 47.48 
in the 400. And then he has the fourth place finish at the Olympics that he did when he was 17 years old. And so this guy has been the most comparable to Usain Bolt. And obviously, I mean, the numbers are showing that he's better <laughs> at 18, like at equal ages, Arian Knighton is better than Usain Bolt because Usain Bolt, uh, at this point, he only had two sub 20 times by the time he was 18. He had the one with the 20.93, and I believe he ran, or a 19.9, uh, a 19.93. And I believe he also had, what was it, a 19.97 uh, the year before, um, the next year. So uh, that he did that when he was 17, he ran the 19.93. And then the next year he ran a 19.97. So he actually ran a little slower in his eight, uh, when he was 18. And so uh, he ran that, and this guy, Harry Knighton, uh, Harry Knighton has the has four sub twenty times. He has this nineteen point four nine, and he has uh, three other ones. Obviously, the nineteen eight four that he ran, and then uh, there was another one. There was three others he did last year. But so he's been running really, really fast times as well. And obviously, when it comes to the biggest stage, the Olympics, he got fourth, and Usain Bolt wasn't able to get out of the prelims. And so whenever people are making these Usain, the next Usain Bolt comments, you know, you usually just laugh at them. But this one actually seems genuine. And this is the first one that I actually believe could be the next Usain Bolt, if not better. He's running nearly half of a second faster than what Usain Bolt did at the same age. So he's already got him on the, the talent side by there. The 100, we don't know what, he's, what he ran, runs, but looking at what he did when he was 19 or 20 years old, it's fair to say he was he would probably be running around a 10.04, if not a 10.1, uh, when he was doing the, if he was to do the 100. Now the area that Bolt obviously has him is gonna be that 400. So, uh, he had the the 45.35 versus uh, Arian who only has a 47.48. And so the it's a little different because it seems like Knighton has been more of the one and two guy, obviously, and then and Bolt focused pretty much on the 400 until he transitioned over to the 100 uh, down during the mid uh, the mid 2000s and so uh that that's going to come into uh play here when it comes to trying to drop that time from a four nine down into the 19 threes and twos and maybe into the ones because you're going to have to have that strength from the 400 like we it's going to start to really creep up on you in that second half of the race because it's 100 and the probably the, the first 150 will be really smooth it'll be really good there's no problem there what's going to become an issue a little bit will be that endurance strength the fact that you don't have that 400 meter background how is that going to play into what you're going to be able to be running when it comes to the these massive meets and and trying to break these world records like the better you get and the higher you become athletically the more those little things matter. And the fact that he doesn't have as much training in the, the 400 traditionally is, is gonna be a thing. Now, I have no idea what they're, they're running, uh, what the training's like. Uh, obviously, he's in a fantastic training group. It's him, Grant Holloway, Noah Williams, Noah Lyles, Josephus Lyles, Wade Van Nieker, I think Steven Gardner as well is over there. So he's in a great training group to be able to do very well. Uh, so I don't think that that's going to be an issue. Uh, it's just, we don't know because we, he doesn't run many open 400s. He ran the four by four last year or last weekend with uh, Grant Holloway and crew, uh, but we're just not seeing what he's doing right now in the 400 because he doesn't, he doesn't run the open 400. But uh, if he is getting that endurance training in and if in, in practice he's, you know, splitting these 45s, then man, I'd have to say that he's gonna break the world record. This year, I don't think so. I mean, to drop down from a 1984 to a 1918 in one season is an insane gap to do. Like that's wild to, to, to see. It would be wild in just a regular, <laughs> like, you know, for someone running much slower times, it'd be a lot to go down by nearly, nearly a second. And so uh, while I don't think that he'll break it this year, the world record, if anyone's going to get it right now, it looks like it's gonna be uh, Arian Knighton. 
Now, uh, would like to see what he's going to be doing later on the season. Is he going to run another 200? Is he just gonna save it until nationals? What What's the game plan gonna be there? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to seeing when he will run and if this is something that he can repeat. Will he be able to be down in those nine fives, the nine fours, or will the next time you run be in that nine eight range, nine seven? Uh, that's gonna be a big difference to kind of determine, once again, is this a flash in the pan or is this gonna be the new normal? I'm hoping it's gonna be the new normal. Uh, next, got to go on over to Trayvon Bromel. So Trayvon Bromel, uh, obviously we had him just on the podcast last weekend. If you would like to hear the interview we did, it was amazing. You guys have loved it. Actually, it's been the most w- watched and listened to interview that we've ever had. Uh, and one of the most listened to and watched just episodes overall that we've had. So thank you very much for that. But, uh, he runs an opening of a 9.75 with a plus 2.1 tail win so just a little bit over the legal limit uh still overall very fast he would have i think ran what would have been like a 1989 if it was you know no no win there so still would be very fast and where does this plant him to do what he's going to be doing next year obviously this would have been the fastest time last year uh had he had he ran this last season uh and it been legal uh last season he opened up with a 10.01 so adjusting for wind this still would have been faster this year compared to last season uh he didn't run into the nine sevens at with any amount of wind until june 5th so he is already way ahead of schedule here and when we spoke with him in our interview he mentioned that he's going to be more strategic with when and how he is going to be racing he doesn't want to go with what happened last year where he ran really well during the quote-unquote regular season but then once it came to the championships and the olympics he wasn't able to perform so he said he wants to avoid that by strategically deciding which races he's going to be doing so that when it matters the most, he can be blasting at all cylinders there. Uh, And so he's really uh, gearing up to have a a special year and looking at what he is doing, uh, I I believe it. He's opening up with a, what would have been the world lead had there been just a little bit less win there. Uh, I, I can only imagine that this is going to be a very, very fast season. Uh, Next, kind of tra- like tying into Trayvon Brumel. Uh, so out of Botswana, let's seal Tobogo, uh, Tobogo of Botswana. He breaks uh, Trayvon Brumel's U20 100 meter record with a time of 9.96. Uh, Trayvon Brumel, he broke this record, I think it was uh, 9.9, uh, 9.99 when in he did this in 2014. And so this guy, I don't know too much about him. Like I'll, I'll be honest, like this is the first time that I had really heard about this guy's name and like, take a look at what his progression has looked like. So uh, obviously he's 18 right now. And so the times we're going back to are when he was 16 years old, but this guy three years ago, he ran a 10.49. Uh, or I guess two years ago, ran a 10.49. Last year, he ran a 10.11. And then now he's running a 9.96. So this guy is progressing in the exact right way that you want to be doing it. And whenever you're breaking a record by Trayvon Brumel, you know, you're gonna be in, in really good company. Uh, and so once again, we'll see how this translates uh, throughout the rest of the year flash in the pan or is this the new normal uh it it was a good race there wasn't too much wind uh and so i'm excited to see what other records are going to be going down and how this guy might do at the the big stage he's only 18 so uh you know usually going through rounds when you're younger is a little bit more difficult because you just don't have that experience but um he's going to be a, a name that we should be watching now uh, you know same similar to Ferdin- ferdinand uh last year where not a lot a lot, a lot of people knew of his name at least here in the united states because it's an, an, an international runner and now this is another guy he's on the map we'll see what he's going to be doing uh and if he can be an issue or something we have to worry about this season or seasons to come and then uh after that christine and boma so christine and boma she runs the world lead in the four or not the 400 she runs the world lead in the 200 with a time of 21 
10.87. She also ran a 10.97 in the 100 as well. So she is continuing her dominance that she had last year from when she was a medalist in the Olympics in the 200 at 17 years old. And this, this is someone that I believe this is the real deal. I don't need to see you do this many, much more often. Uh, it's a season best for her. Last year, she opened up with a time of 22.73 before then closing out with her, what was it, 21 point seven is that what she had ran uh i can't remember exactly she her she ended her no 21 point 21.81 no no 21.78 yeah so she opened up the the year with the 22.73 and then she closed out with a second bet better mark than that with a 21.73 uh as well so she now opening up her season with a 21.87 is just showing like, man, we're gonna see some wild times this year on the women's side. Like the like record books have a chance to be going bonkers. I mean, she's running super freaking fast and at a very young age and a, and a lady that is just getting started with her, her 200 career. Remember she was a, a 400 meter runner for most of the, much of the season and then had to switch out to the 400 or I had to switch out to the 200 because of rules uh, that happened just a few months or like a two months or so before the Olympics. And so she's just starting to learn this technique and the skills and getting the speed there. And if she's already running these insanely fast times and she still is learning about the event man she's gonna be a she's gonna be a problem she's going to be a problem uh i mean she didn't run a sub 22 time until the olympic semifinals in august and so and she's already ran it in what was it april and so she's she's gonna be a problem man like I'm, I'm really excited to see what this is going to be looking like for her in the in the 200. I mean, she I definitely think she can take down uh, Gabby Thomas and Elaine Thompson Ra. Like she's showing that she can be that gold medalist. Uh, and I'm wondering what, like how fast is she going to run? Like, I mean, she she can she can run some insane times. I mean, wait, what was the uh, what was the world record again? I am drawing a massive a massive blank uh, let me let me just pull it up the the 200 meters women's world record is a time of what was it oh no that's not that's the current best hers of 22.87 i want the all-time list here okay here we go the women's 200 world record yeah 21.34 and so she's She's not gonna break that this year, obviously, uh, but she can definitely be getting down. Could she run in the 21 fives? Possibly, I mean, she could run. She, I definitely see her running in the 21 sixes. I, I mean, we saw the 21 six one and the 21 five three by Elaine thompson Ra and Gabby Thomas last year. I don't see why not. I don't see why we can't see it because those have been the other, the two fastest times since the nineties. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a very exciting, uh, race and, uh, can't wait to see how she's going to be, be doing, uh, last thing want to talk about. And so, uh, I didn't bring it up too much, even though it was the biggest meet of the year. And honestly, my favorite meet that I have ever competed in the pen relays and Drake didn't talk about it too much. Cause we didn't see too many insane performances. We had some really good names, uh, competing. We saw the four by 1500 meter record go down uh, for women, the women of Arkansas. We saw Sydney McLaughlin opening up with the 100 meter hurdles. We saw New Balance showing their new kits with uh, Sydney McLaughlin as well as Vernon Norwood and a few other New Balance athletes. They were showing those off. But the, the real thing that I want to talk about, it wasn't a specific performance per se. It was more of um, what happened after a performance? So this was the DMR of the, the college, the college of America DMR and Ole Miss, they, they win it. They win the DMR. Uh, and he, we had Mario, Mario Garcia Romo, um, just going crazy. Like he had the, the baton pretend it's like a baseball bat celebrating. And we, we also saw later on Devin Allen celebrating the 110 meter hurdles. Like he's, he's, you know, embracing the crowd and everything. And, and it was like, man, like, I love this. I, this is my favorite part of 
like the sport, like seeing people celebrate. It's kind of like the bat flip, uh, you know, after home runs in basketball, the end zone celebration in football, uh, you know, all of that stuff. That That's what this is for track and field. And a lot of people don't do it, but it's my favorite thing. Like, you know, celebrate. You did something crazy. You won a race. You beat all these other people that want to win it and you're number one. Yeah, so celebrate. You know, you use the, the baton as a bat. You know, go, you know, you know, ha- stick your tongue out and have fun and everything like that. It's it brings the some lightheartedness to the sport and and more um, you know, more fun. It makes it more fun and entertaining. So uh, I'm hoping that we see uh, more of that, but I mean, you never know. You know, our sport's weird. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us here. Um, Oh, I might as well share with you guys some news if you didn't see it. So uh, one thing that I am excited to share with you, if you haven't seen it on Instagram yet, I think I might be posting this. It might have already been posted or it will be posted soon. But uh, I am going to be the host or one of the hosts for the upcoming American Track League competition in Puerto Rico. Uh, I will be doing post-race and post-competition interviews of the athletes. It's going to be really fun, uh, live on ESPN2. Uh, and so we're going to be going there. We'll get a vlog and a video. We're going to post some stuff for you so you can see some behind the scenes of us hanging out with athletes and what it all looks like and, and all that type of stuff. So I am super excited for that opportunity. Can't wait to bring some more content to you about that competition as well. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode of Track World News. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like, uh, subscribe leave a comment, leave a review, all that stuff really helps us know that you're enjoying what's going on. That's going to do it from us. Have a good one. Peace.